I'm Jim, the filter guy, and uh, I'm just opening up the Abbey Road Observatory here. There is a chance of some clear skies to maybe do some solar observing, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but while you're here, <coughs> get a look at my micro observatory, which is the topic of today's video. I will explain <coughs> how and why I built this small telescope setup versus what a lot of other people do, building a dome and that sort of a thing. Uh, before we get started on the video, uh, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, maybe you'd like to click the like button down below, and uh, if you want to stay up to date on everything the ARO is doing, maybe subscribe to the channel. Great. All right. Well, we will see you in a moment. Welcome, everyone, to today's video, Building a Micro Observatory. This video will cover why I built it, where I built it, and how I built it, as well as what worked with the design and what didn't. Before I built my observatory, I used to set up my telescope every time I wanted to observe. When I was done, I'd pack it all up and bring it back inside. This image here is of the 8-inch LX10 I was using back in 2009, set up for the night of a visual observing from my backyard. Note the pile of filters I was experimenting with even back then. By 2011, I had made the transition to Electronically Assisted Astronomy, or EAA, as well as to a German equatorial mount. The image on the right illustrates a typical setup for an evening of observing. My main EAA camera at the time was a Mellencam Extreme, shown here mounted on the 8-inch SCT. You will note the multitude of cables involved back then. So why did I build a micro-observatory? One of the biggest reasons was that having a full-time job and two kids means I don't have a lot of spare time to observe. Having so little free time means that it is unlikely for me to drive an hour to find dark skies. Pretty much all my observing happens from my backyard. As you might imagine from the preceding slide, Setting up to do EAA can be time-consuming. Carrying everything outside, assembling it, and getting the mount aligned can easily take 45 minutes or more. And then the same again at the end of the night to pack it all up. The final thing to consider was the available space in my yard. My family has many other uses for our backyard, so whatever I was to build had to be small. This is an image captured from Google Maps showing the area around my house in the central part of Ottawa, Canada. As you can see, my neighborhood has a lot of tall, mature trees. My driveway and front yard are totally useless for observing as a result. The backyards in my neighborhood are all on the order of 50 by 50 feet in size. You can see that I already have a small patio, two sheds, and a vegetable garden in my yard, so a traditional dome-style observatory was likely going to be too big to acquire the necessary family approvals. At least, there aren't too many large trees in the area of my backyard. After giving it some serious thought, and some trial and error with my tripod-mounted setup, I decided to put my observatory in the northwest corner of my yard, as indicated by the X in the image on the right. The view of the sky from this position is good towards the south and east, but totally blocked by houses and trees to the north and west. This position also minimizes direct exposure to porch lights from my neighbors. From this position, I can still just see Polaris over my neighbor's oak tree, allowing me to do mount polar alignments. Finally, 
This position is tucked in nicely next to the existing patio, so very little of the yard is affected. So, how did I plan to build an observatory with a very small footprint? The sketch here gives a rudimentary idea of what I planned. To give me a small footprint, yet still provide a suitable, stable support for the telescope, I decided to use a 10-inch reinforced concrete pier with a work table cantilevered off of it. All the materials were readily available from Home Depot, including the sonotube, concrete mix, wire mesh, and gravel. I did all the work myself, except for the mount adapter, which you will see later. For various reasons, mostly available time, the observatory was built in phases over the course of six and a half years. Work started on July 19, 2014, with the digging of a hole. Digging by hand was very slow, due to the ground consisting mostly of hard-packed clay. After about two hours of steady digging, I decided that was far enough, ending with a hole about two feet across and four feet deep. The next step was to put a layer of drainage stone in the bottom of the hole. This was to keep water away from the base of the pier and hopefully reduce the tendency of it to get heaved by frost in the winter. Next I formed a reinforced wire mesh in the shape of a cylinder, complete with a mushroom-shaped base, and put it into the hole. Using high-strength concrete, I put about 8 inches of concrete in the hole over top of the wire mesh, forming the base of the pier. The wire mesh was loosely supported, and the whole thing covered for 24 hours while the concrete hardened. The next day, I put the sonotube in the hole over top of the wire mesh and backfilled around it first with more drainage gravel and then with the dirt I took out of the hole. I left the dirt a few inches shy of the top of the hole to leave room later for topsoil and sod. I plumbed the sonotube and added wooden braces on the outside, as well as located and installed the four half-inch threaded rod that would eventually support the work table. I also made a wooden template to hold the three-quarter inch threaded rod that would eventually support the mount. With this all ready to go, I hand mixed bag after bag of concrete and poured it into the sonotube until it was full. This was slow, laborious work and a little tricky as the concrete had to be transferred from my wheelbarrow into a bucket to be carried up a ladder and poured down the sonotube a bucket at a time. After allowing the concrete a couple of days to cure, I removed the braces and trimmed the sonotube back to the final height. I primed and painted the exterior of the sonotube to preserve it a bit better from the weather. Then the project went on hiatus for four months due to other various things going on at the time. When work started again in November, I laid out the work table using 2 by 4s a bit of a jigsaw puzzle really, and got it installed on the pier complete with plywood top. Next, the pressure was on to get all the wiring done before it snowed. This consisted of digging two shallow trenches between my house and the pier, one for the data cables and one for the AC power. I ran the power separately in order to minimize the potential for electrical interference on my data cables. The cables were all run inside of standard PVC electrical conduit, inch and a quarter conduit for the data cables and half inch conduit for the power. The final installation at the pier includes two GFCI receptacles, two USB powered extension cables, two CAT6 Ethernet cables, one S-video, one composite video, and one 9-pin serial cable. You can see from the photo that I finished just in time. The last step to get the pier operational was the mount adapter. 
I built a prototype out of wood first and then had the machinist at my work make me one out of scrap aluminum that we had lying around the shop. The first light with the new pier was on December 7, 2014. I used the pier in this configuration, shown here, for about five years, using a poly tarp to cover it when not in use. Consequently, that poly tarp had to be replaced about once a year due to exposure to the elements wearing it out. Over this five-year period, my venerable Atlas mount decided to finally give up the ghost. So in 2019, I upgraded the mount. To replace the Atlas, I purchased a Skywatcher EQ8R Pro. It is a beast of a mount, very solid, with 110 pound carrying capacity. Now I can put all my scopes on the mount at the same time, instead of, instead of having to swap them around like I used to do with the Atlas. I can now flip between observing the sun, moon, or deep sky objects without swapping telescopes and having to rebalance the mount. Boy, is that sweet. Now we come to spring 2020. With my mount and scope set up settled, it was time to stop procrastinating and build a permanent cover for the observatory. To keep with the small footprint theme, I decided to build a lightweight flip-down doghouse out of wood and aluminum. The steel roof and pressure-treated board cladding matches the appearance of my two garden sheds, which were renovated around the same time. The matching exterior helps the observatory look less conspicuous. Finally, in June 2020, my micro-observatory project was finished. There are a number of things that I think went well with this project. First off, having a permanently mounted, balanced, and aligned German equatorial mount makes life so much easier. Tracking and go-to accuracy are all issues I no longer have to deal with. Since my telescopes stay outside, they are already at ambient, or near ambient temperature, when I open the observatory so practically no cool-down time is needed before observing. The doghouse idea, although it looks kind of ugly, works very well. Way easier than slinging a heavy tarp on and off all the time. The well-ventilated doghouse also helps to keep the mount and scopes from getting too hot in the summer. Finally, perhaps the biggest benefit of the observatory is that my setup time has been greatly reduced. I can open the doghouse, hook up my laptop cameras, power it on, do a one-star mount alignment, focus, and be ready to observe all in about five to ten minutes. Things that I would do differently a second time include renting a post hole digger so that it would have taken less time and allowed me to dig a deeper hole. Renting an electric cement mixer, as hand mixing took a lot of time and was laborious. Moving to a more permanent mount cover sooner. I think I pushed my luck using a poly tarp. Incomplete weatherproofing may have been part of my emerging problems with the Atlas mount. I tried using wireless communications at the time I first built the pier, but I found it unreliable in cold weather. However, wireless technology may be more reliable now and worth another look. And finally, my calculations with the doghouse design were off a bit, resulting in a small obstruction of my field of view when looking south. A minor issue, but I may have been able to avoid it if I prototyped the doghouse first before building the final version. In conclusion, the whole project was very affordable. Materials for the pier totaled around $200. Purchase of 50 feet of the various cables I ran between the mount and to my basement computer came to around $200. And the materials to build the doghouse came to around $300. 
so the total cost of the observatory came to around $700. Coincidentally, I spent almost as much on tarps over the course of five years as I did to build the doghouse. I am very happy with the final result of my observatory build. It is so quick to set up and take down now. I have no problem opening the observatory up even for 15-20 minutes of observing. So take that, clouds. Well, that is it. Thank you for watching. If anyone has a question, please feel free to leave a comment below. Alternatively, you can send me an email to the address in my channel description. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to click the like button. To stay up to date on everything the ARO is doing, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, this is Jim the Filter Guy wishing everyone clear skies.